this is, this is, this is. The baby's over here, and uh, yeah, there, there might be some baby noise. There might be some. We're, this this will be. This will be good. <laughs> well, dude, the reason why I just thought of you is, is because you're coming to Bremerton, Bremerton, Washington. Super excited, Bremerton. It's got a lot of punk bands and history, and <laughs> well, <laughs> like our friends, the Brain Sick, of course. Who, like, you know, we we're playing with Sean's new band, as far as I know. Yeah, so you know Brain Sick. Totally, yeah. My old band, Homeless Wonders, played with Brain Sick back in the day. Their guitar player, Danny, is in a band called Since We Were Kids Now, and we just played with them in Tucson last weekend. Okay. Wow. And, and we also are, uh, man, I don't know the band name because everybody around here calls them Maximum Asshole, but it might be Artemis Maximus. Artemis Maximus, yes, you're correct. Yeah, and we cover one of their songs entitled Shit Fuck Goddamn, and uh, we're playing it in Bremerton. Um, and of course, they have a song called Bremerton Sucks, I Hate It. <laughs> and uh, the Bremerton Sucks, I Hate It song has been saying a lot since Bremerton got added to the tour itinerary. Um, we don't think that, we just know the song. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be a, a great show. And, and you're right, I think... I think uh, those two bands are awesome, and I hope I hope Artemis Maximus starts playing again. They haven't played for a little while, and maybe maybe I'm not paying en enough attention. But it's cool that you actually have some roots in Bremerton and with the Bremerton scene. And I'm pretty sure that Homeless Wonders, that was Brandon and I's band before Teenage Bottle Rocket. We played with Brain Sick up in Bellingham once. Is Bellingham close to Bremerton? Uh, no, it's like okay. three hours. Okay, north. so Bellingham's like Canada, and Bremerton's sort of Seattle. I... Yeah, it's like if you go past Tacoma too far, you hit Bremerton. <laughs> okay. I, I wish I was more familiar with the area. It's okay. It's kind of it takes a while because it's it's. I mean, Bremerton itself is a pretty simple town, but to the untrained eye, it's very confusing because there's water everywhere. But because gotcha. of that, you can always kind of tell where you are, you're at if, if you can just pay attention to where on the water you are. Gotcha. But back to the show, um, <laughs> you guys are playing. So you're doing, uh, you're doing a tour, and you're coming through Bremerton on the tour. And, man, I was excited. You know, I know Tom... Uh, Wisniewski from you know my band is uh, is all excited about seeing you guys. I think it's just cool that some friends of ours from like the real not the real world. I mean Bremerton's the real world, but that's our town, you know, so it's different. Yeah. But yeah, from from the normal touring world coming to our town. Uh, Guttermouth was just here last week. Um, I went to see that show. Oh no way! Yeah, it was cool to see them. Yeah, so I think Bremerton's actually kind of maybe doing some cool cool stuff in the scene nowadays you know just it's bubbling it's bubbling to the surface a little bit right um, right but you guys are I mean, playing some small towns sort of do this with the, their punk scene i know yeah. like casper wyoming was like oh my gosh everybody's got to play here it's crazy and then they kind of did one of these and i don't know maybe bremerton's on the up and up I mean, you, you know how it is yeah i think so uh, do you do you have an agent how did you book the show i mean uh, you know, our, our agent Toby Jag at um, Atomic oh, Music Group. <laughs> okay, Toby. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Toby, nice. Did, and, and, you know, a fellow Washingtonian. Uh, he's uh, from Enumclaw. Oh yeah. And he, I know Toby. Uh, he just loves Washington. He's a little more familiar with the layout of Bremerton. I, I'm sure. He is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's been here. He's been in this very room that I'm in right now. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> That's cool. He booked you guys, so you trust him. If he says go to Bremerton, you're like, we're going to Bremerton. Yeah, I yeah, pretty much. And um, you know, I mean, like you know, Artemis Maximus, of course, MXPX, and um, Brainsick comes to mind. And and I, I, it's just kind of weird how that that's that's how we're directly affiliated with uh, the city of Bremerton. I, I'm, I'm trying to look up the place that we're playing. Oh yeah, it's the Trace didn't Trace. 
Tracyton Movie House. Tracyton. Yeah. Ever been there? Yeah, I've been there. I, I went to the first show they had there um, last year, and uh, it was fun. The fib the fibs were were headlining, and they're they're a local band in Bremerton that's doing kind of like a now local band, whereas they they were they were probably still in the garage when last I was doing shows, you know, kind of in Bremerton. But uh, yeah, they're doing well. Uh, but this place, this place will be fun. Um, I think they're, it's the kind of thing where each show they do, they kind of make the venue better because it, it truly is a movie theater. It's what, uh, it, what it normally is. So gotcha. you're, pro you're playing in a theater, kind of like in Petaluma, California. Yeah. Yeah. The that, Phoenix, the Phoenix theater. It's not that, it's not that rough. I mean, it's actually a normal looking movie theater, uh -huh. but, um, yeah, I think it's kind of a cool setup for doing some shows, especially bigger audiences in Bremerton, because most of the other places are fairly small. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah, I, I wish I knew the name of Sean's um, new band from Brain Sick. Uh, it's called um, Radical Leftovers. I had to think about it for a second. Radical Leftovers. Okay, yeah. so are they playing too? I think they are playing. Yeah, uh, Josh Kennedy, the guitar player. Um, He's done a lot of shows in the past, and he started promoting shows now in Bremerton again. And his band, Radical Leftovers, you know, with Sean on bass and singing, uh, it, it feels like an extension of Brain Sick. It's similar styled. It's like I watched uh, a video. Yeah. 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 Totally. I mean, yeah, and Sean's got a distinctive voice. I have the Brain Sick one foot in my grave, seven inch. Um, <laughs> I don't it's amazing how we remain friends with those guys because that show uh, the first time that me and Brandon hung out with brain sick was probably like nine, 1998. That's crazy. See that, that was all happening when MXPX was out on tour. You know, that was, that's like a super busy, busy time for us. And oh yeah. So we were sort of gone from that scene. I remember brain sick just getting started and we must've just been like, when we'd come home from tour, we'd go to see shows and stuff. So we weren't playing shows with Brain Sick. It was more, it was more me just checking them out and going, yeah. "Yeah, this is cool." But I didn't even realize they were. I knew that they did some shows around the state, but I didn't realize they were doing like shows with other punk bands, you know, that were touring all around the the the, the country. Well, well, tell me about your um, experiences with Artemis Maximus. This band is um, legend in the city of Fort Collins. And the reason why is Bug from Descendants. He just, you know, just shows everybody. And um, did you ever see them play in the past? Oh, yeah. I saw them play many times. Um, right. I mean, Art, the, the main guy, is uh, he's very much just like punk rock metal he's good he's like at singing punk and rock and metal guitar. squeezed together he's a great guitar player great guitar player powerful voice super powerful Dude, voice great he's awesome and uh i actually the song that we cover from them i don't do what he does cody does it <laughs> but i kind of do a change like i do it vegetarian <laughs> yeah it's they have this like motorhead style of punk rock you know i, I that's what i kind of call it i guess where it's just like these like heavy riffs and, yeah and yeah. scooter their their bass player plays the bass upside down and left-handed oh dude right so it's super different and like some of the things that he comes up with is like how did, how are they doing that you know it's like oh because they're like, it's like a new instrument, you know, it's made new. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah. It's so really bass, cool to so see. The bass runs go the different way, man. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What did I just take? Is that the mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, it's just like, you know, I want a pet, I need a Pepsi, and um, there's a fire, fire, everybody out. Like the whole seven inches on repeat constantly in the van. I, I, I think it's a seven inch. It must be a seven inch. Yeah, there's, and, there's, and, that's probably, I, I, I wish I could look up real quick the the album that I used to listen to. Well, we recorded one of their songs. It's on like Fat, it's on Fat Records, our our stealing the covers record. And oh, okay. I remember Artemis Maximus being 
fairly difficult to track down to pay royalties to. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, so, first of all, we didn't know the band name. We thought it was Maximum Asshole. <laughs> and that's, I change. think that's the name of one of their, of the album that, that's that the I one know. we love. Yeah. That's, that's the, the one, one we love. Yeah. That's the record. That's the record. It's like every song's a classic. banger. You're like, what? Oh my! Yeah, okay. it's fucking amazing. It's yeah. it's uh, definitely, yeah. There's a reason it ended up as a song on, on stealing the covers, and any of the songs on that record could have been on that album because it's just like, which one do we cover? There's another Bremerton band that I don't know if you remember from back in the day, Half a Cat. Dude, I don't know Half a Cat. Half a Cat. It was it was all it was all ladies except for. Mike Moen sometimes I think he started the band but eventually it became this just really really kind of just really well crafted songs like the songs were amazing and I had this this like unreleased album of it that Mike Moen gave me and uh and I was just like and I think Ben Hooker played drums Ben Hooker from uh well many many bands in the Bremerton area but <laughs> from Bremerton yeah yeah, man, the the Bremerton edition. I'm happy that you're going to be in town for this. And yeah, uh, looks like Chris and Tom are too. And uh, the, when you're not in Bremerton, you, you're in Texas, right, Mike? Well, if, yeah, if I'm not in Bremerton, I might be in Texas. I might be somewhere else in the world, you know, traveling. Right. But uh, I know how it is. We go back and forth. We we go back and forth just depending on what's happening in in life. Speaking of what's happening in life, you know, aside from obviously you're coming to town, I think it's March 27th. Is that soon, um, right? Do you have the, the I was date? just right there. Yeah, it is <laughs> um, the let people know. of March at the Tracy Tin. Yep. Bremerton, 20, Washington. 27th? Yep. Excellent. It's a Saturday night or maybe? Uh, um, I think it might be a Sunday. Sunday night? Sunday night? Let me, let you know, me there's been a check on that too. Look at this. I have a phone right in front of me. It is a Sunday, even, Sunday night, I was Sunday just, night in Bremerton. I was just talking. Just come join us after, I don't know, Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you're doing. <laughs> Getting them ribs. Uh, so check it out. I was just having a conversation about this, about the fact that a lot of shows are happening on a Sunday. And it makes a lot of sense because Bremerton is not an A market as you would call it, it you know uh, so Seattle would be your A market and Tacoma would be sort of a B market I would say I would say Bremerton's almost like a C market maybe we cut we squeeze it up into a B but I think that's why we're getting so many shows on a Sunday it's, it fills in a day that nobody normally would want <laughs> so anybody from Bremerton listening to this understand you're gonna have to get used to going to shows on Sunday night figure it out Take yeah. a nap. Take a nap that you know Sunday morning or something. <laughs> Sunday I, I, I'm afternoon. sorry. He, he's he's going crazy. Um, yeah, I heard. What? Who's this guy? His name's Casper. Um, hey Casper. Yeah, uh, he is eight months on the eleventh, so pretty much eight eight month, pretty much eight months old. And when I'm not on tour, uh, Rachel, my wife, his mom, she goes to work as a nurse, and I. I'm a stay-at-home dad. It's pretty awesome. That it's not awesome. as scary as you might, as people might think out there. Um, I, it's kind of like, when do I take a nap today? Um, you know, that's chill. the scariest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Never it's, is the answer, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you just can't let him run the, the whole gig, man. You know, he will, I think, if you, if you wanted him to. Right. Um, he wants to hang constantly, so there's sort of a list of things I have to go through. Um, if it's like, okay, he had a food, he had a milk, I changed his diaper, and he's still freaking out, he just wants to hang out. Mm. So sometimes it's just like, yeah, you got to hold me. <laughs> right, right. But that, yeah, that's... man, um, we're, you know, Bottle Rockets from Laramie, Wyoming, and dude, we were just happy to get awesome shows whenever they came through. Uh, it, Laramie is like a Z market. Z. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, you guys put Laramie on the map, I think. Well, uh, dude, back in like Homeless Wonders days, we had all play our friend's garage. And, uh, you know, we were trying to always uh, throw punk shows. We had a lot of bands come through Laramie at this point. Um, Pegboy, uh, Lawrence Arms. 
Okay. And uh, it's like the same sort of thing. Like, you know how it is being from a town like Bremerton, whenever there's a show, even the upcoming Teenage Bottle Rocket show, it's more of an event because it's like, hold, hold the phone here. Let's, uh, what's going on um, up the street from where I live. And, uh, you know, small town shows could always, they're, they're always great. Yeah. Yeah. Bremerton, don't let me down. Come on. Everybody come out to the show. It's going to be, it will be an event. And the fact yeah. that we don't have to get on a ferry. Because normally to go to a show in Seattle, you get on a ferry, and then lately, at least during the pandemic, ish, there's been issues with you know not enough workers on the ferries, and so like people are getting stranded. Oh, well. that's that's always like a little stress for people going to events in Seattle. If you're living in Bremerton, if you're living in, in on the peninsula, we call it. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So. It so is are, we cool gonna that... have to take, are we gonna have to take a uh, ferry into Bremerton? Is no. that the vibe as a as a band? No, you're good. You can take the fa- you can take the bridge. There's a bridge. Oh, okay. But, but it's just like people want to go to Seattle and drink and just make it. They don't want to drive home after a show, and so they'll take the ferry. Yeah, yeah. I I, I love that idea. Is there a bar at the ferry on the ferry? Is it? Unfortunately, continue. not late at night when you're trying to you know, they're <laughs> continue trying to the party. Drunks, yeah. It's it's there's people get their alcohol in. That's for sure. There's a lot of like ah screaming and like sometimes there's fights. Oh right, I, I, people I can imagine. Down. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's not as bad as like say like a, a McDonald's after the bars close in the UK, anywhere in the UK. Oh yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. Well, who are these monsters? <laughs> yeah, well, where are they? Seriously. I mean, part, it, it's funny, you know, thinking about thinking about touring and like some of the funnest <sighs> parts about touring is just the traveling through weird towns that you normally wouldn't have any reason to go to, you know. And, yeah, I mean, it's. It, Sometimes it's late at night and people are wasted and hungry and uh, everybody gets hungry whether or not you're wasted or not and you end up in the same spots. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, okay, <laughs> they, they had a night too. <laughs> I <wonder> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, crazy. man, yeah. So are you guys, uh, are you guys uh, just going to get in a in – a, in a, a big van or a, what would it be like a sprinter van or do you guys have something like that what's your situation we have a 15 touring? passenger gmc 3500 um everybody has their own bench because we pull the trailer nice and we've always been in the same order in our van like merch people and uh and that kind of thing help out with the driving sit shotgun i'm in the first bench Cody's in the second bench, Miguel's in the third bench, and Chuka and Brandon are in the last bench. Like Brandon was in the last bench, and I guess the drummer goes in the back constantly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that's just the way it's been. Um, I try to rotate it out more, you know, like, dude, Cody, come sit shotgun, come run the gun, I'm going to drive, and let's listen to some metal. Yeah. Uh, so we were rolling it in a red, you know, we'll be kicking it in our red van. That's dope, man. So how how long, how many vans have you guys owned over the years? Dude, oh, God, dude. Uh, I mean, I'd say 10 if you're counting Homeless Wonder stuff. But it's not as many as you might think because we were buying some pretty beater vans, you know? like Yeah, yeah. This van's toast. Uh, and we'll be lucky to get a couple tours out of it. But um, one of the bands we picked up on tour actually uh, ended up last, lasting a while just from like breaking down the tour. The band's completely dead. Let's buy a new one here in, um, I forget where we were in Wisconsin. But yeah, it's, it's like 10, 10 vans at this point, tons of miles. Yeah. And a second trailer. Second trailer. Wow. Only two trailers? It That's took us a while to become trailer band, and then when we did, we uh, we stayed with the same trailer for a long time until it was just like not feasible or convenient. When you're we were just like stuffing it full of every like one more button, you yeah. know, squeezing a button in the back top left corner. Okay, we got all the merge packs. Um, so now our trailer's obnoxiously huge. 
We went the opposite direction and yeah, you could stand up. You won't hit your head. Yeah, we had a lot of different setups over the years when we were in our van days. And one of my favorites was was 97. We had like a normal 15 passenger Ford van, but no seats in it. It was it was a bed in the back and then literally just like a love seat like from the 70s, you know, with like a, you know, a, a plaid pattern. Like it was a light, a light brown plaid pattern. Wow. So, so it always looked the same. Like it didn't never look dirty or clean. It was just always, you know, <laughs> the love right. seat. But that it, thing was just chilling. Was in clean the... as it could for having a mattress in there. Yeah. And it wasn't tied down or, or, or ta tacked down in any way. It was just like, so if... <laughs> If we had to like stop really quickly, that whole thing would just slam to the front <laughs> of the van, to the back oh seats, God. or to the front seat, back of the front seats. Uh, but I, that I mean, was I saw MXPX at the Ozitlan Theater in Denver, Colorado, back in the day. Mm. Is that what you guys were cruising in? We were no, that was a different van. That van? was our Beauville Chevrolet Beauville, like a maroon van. That we got, you know. I don't know, a year or so before this, you know, we started touring and that was our first real van, really. I mean, we had a van before that that was this big, giant, yellow camper type looking van that was our friend's parents and they just let us use it for shows and the brakes oh, went out like on our first show. So, oh. so I was like, all right, uh, <laughs> we're going to have to figure something else. But so we had this other van uh, on that tour because that Ozatlan maybe we played there twice but i think that might have been 1995 and that was okay. our first tour, tour ever and our there, first time playing denver yeah okay whoa just rocking right out of the gates it's amazing um yeah i mean i don't know I, we, we played with five iron frenzy and blenderhead was 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 sort of their tour but we were kind of we were just as known i guess around the so that was your first denver shows with those bands i think so yeah yeah so it was, this was a headlining show that i was at we must have been back then we must have come yeah, back I, I, yeah right around 96 or 97 it had to have been 95 whatever i don't know it was probably either the small town minds tour or something with we we tour with slick shoes a lot back then 90 pound wuss stuff like that yeah i'm sure we played with one of those guys Huh? How many? How many vans has MXPX been through? Oh, not as many as you guys, but a, probably almost ten. I would say. Um, no. Probably maybe even like <laughs> seven, six, seven, six, maybe. Right. Um, Dude, did you get smart eventually and buy a van that did, had less than a hundred thousand miles on it? <laughs> yeah, but we had like we were on tour with Rancid. Um, right. And we were. It was it was a shorter run, so we just were vanning it, and we we had our van out there. We drove our van down. I actually, flew out, but somebody drove our van down. <laughs> That's the vibe with us. And we started we'll in there. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, there was a good reason for it. I was doing something, but uh, we started in Denver, and then right away there was something wrong with the van because I remember being outside tinkering with it with somebody. Outside the gig, we were at, um, well, it was Rancid, so it was it was like um, Fillmore, okay. Fillmore Mid, oh. or what is that, Mil Fillmore Denver, or whatever it's called. Right. So we were just out in the parking lot, parked right outside the door of the venue, trying to fix our van, and then we got it fixed, and then literally the next day, driving out of Denver to, we were heading down into the plains, into the Midwest to go... I think the next show is Minneapolis or something like that. It was a far drive. And so, sure enough, we broke down in Kansas. We oh. broke down even before that, but we broke down in, we, we broke down again in Kansas and then ended up at some uh, dealership. And they're like, well, the, only, the biggest van we have is this 12-passenger this van. And so we literally had to buy it, and we left our, our other van just sitting there at the lot. Did you make the show? We made the show late, Sweet. <laughs> yeah. but we, we made the show. Yeah. I think and you played. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. We just walked in and threw his stuff walked in, in and, and rocked in. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. So we didn't miss the show, but 
uh, it was it was stressful sitting there at the dealership like come on can we just do this faster let's just go <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally totally we um we have blown up on tour and had to just rent a u-haul and actually the last breakdown was the last day of tour rented a u-haul to get to the last show mm -hmm. um everybody else was in like a rental car or something like we rented a suburban or something two vehicles took it to the last show in boston ditched the van there grabbed all, as much as we could and then put everything else into you know actually attached the trailer to a u-haul or whatever and got it home borrowed our friend's van i think for another tour after that and then finally got this one that's more reliable and yeah the seats are pretty uncomfortable in the van right now but uh it, it runs great yeah 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 that's like priorities there <laughs> yeah, like, yeah we just need something My that hurts works. after two hours in this thing but uh yeah cool we made it yeah yeah Let's just get get to the next city. Stretch your legs. I was thinking about buses too, because I mean, you always think, okay, if we could just get 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 to where we can afford buses, everything will be fine. Well, not so right. much. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the Ramones. I think the crew had a bus, and then they would do they would van it and and you know hotel it. I was talking to Stefan Egerton from The Descendants about this, and I think that he'd prefer like a hotel drive in the day situation rather than drive through the night and you're in a city that day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it all depends on how you sleep while something's moving. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I get, I'm good at that. I'm, I'm. It rocks me to sleep. Yeah, I'm good at it. Um, we did a, a, a bandwagon tour once, and I guess they're, they're, everybody was telling us they're so bumpy. And, dude, I slept like a baby. And it's cool to be in the city you're playing for the whole next day, but you are pretty compacted in with uh, your best friends. Like, here you go. Here's yeah. this shoebox for the next 20 days. Yeah. Don't absolutely. kill each other. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's pros and cons. I mean, we've we've done both, and it's kind of – being in a bus is – is cool in in ways like for me because you can make your bunk like your like hideout absolutely so you can have all yeah. your you know your i have my journal in there, curtain, like, and you're in phone. your own apartment yeah your own little apartment yeah and so i like that aspect of it because i'm a i'm a i'm a guy that likes to get out and talk to people but then when i'm done i like to just chill and like not have anybody looking at me or talking to me asking me questions so you know the opposite of a mom right like yeah <laughs> or, uh... <laughs> right right uh we have some uh, band members that get drunk enough that will break that barrier right and uh you'll see a hand come through and it's like dude this is my safe space man this is my space <laughs> i mean yeah i mean like this curtain is a barrier it's, there's a line here that's been drawn and uh, you're crossing it yeah, and I think the only the only hands I want to see is a family member, my wife or my kids. It's like okay, not some <laughs> random drunk dude <laughs> that I that I love, but yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, right. Hey man. <laughs> oh man, it 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 also you know, obviously things things change, but like back in the day, I just remember some some we've all been there, but like some some of our crew guys puking on their computer in the bunk and just oh, having dude. the puke just just all over the keyboard like <laughs> like <laughs> dude this one time i threw up in a bandwagon and our drummer it was his first tour with us his warp tour and chuka helped me out man i he's just a good he's a good dad he's uh he got me out I, I was like man this our new drummer really he, he's taking one for the team here um, great dude, great dude. It takes some a real true friend to clean up your own puke. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, He's like, um, I, <laughs> but yeah, over a laptop is, uh, oh man. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, all right, I'm throwing this away. I'm ordering a new one. It was our merch guy. I won't, I won't disclose who it, who it was, but <laughs> it's funner that way. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, no, but but vans, man, like. That's basically kind of what we do with flyouts. Is we're 
we fly out to a show, we get in a van. Sometimes we'll, we'll van it from that show to the next show and whatever, and we'll fly back home after the last show, you know. But um, I just like being in a hotel, you know, these days. Just being, being in a place where you're just chill for the night. Um, but our, our touring schedule is much different these days as well. You know, we're doing weekends for the most part. We're, right. And if we do do a, a tour, I don't know. Would we do a van? Would we do a – I don't know what we would do. It's kind um, of an interesting question for me, you know, but. Right. I, we, we van and hotel and whenever you're on the East Coast or you're in Florida or you're even in Texas – Everything's so close to each other. So um, you get a lot of time to goof around and have your own little thing going on. Um, hotel rooms, uh, you know, I, 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 that's the way we've been rolling forever. And we do a lot of 10 day stints. So it's like we yeah. do a weekend and then the Monday through Friday thing and then the next weekend. And then it's like, okay, everybody's away from the babies long enough or their wives at this point. And, um, you know, you get to take advantage of two weekends that way. And, that's the plan that we've been going with, but you know, our record came out in August and we played 62 shows since then. So we're running out of 10 days stints, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> not that like, you know, the, that's, a, well, that's what leads, leads us to Bremerton, Washington. It's just that we wanted to, you know, not just go to the Pacific Northwest and do Vancouver, Seattle, Portland and, and go home. We wanted to, you know, include Boise, which has always been a great scene for us. And we haven't been back to Spokane for a long time. And then we added, you know, sort of hometown shows in Wyoming for uh, the whole Brandon and Ray par uh, birthday party aspect of this. Yeah, that'll be this awesome. Like yearly thing that we've been uh, doing mm -hmm. since uh, Brandon passed away in 2015. And um, yeah, dude, it's, uh, it's I have problems with rooming with our sound guy because it's crazy how loud he snores. And um, I kind of <laughs> sleep because my voice needs to repair itself. Yes, you, sleep is the is the best thing for singers. Totally, man. And we're like me and Cody, we get to split like what a typical lead singer has to do. So, but we'll still have vocal fatigue, and you know, yeah, I I, I can't get any rest with our sound guy. Our sound guy, we call him Buzzsaw. It's fucking next level, dude. And uh, <laughs> earplugs. I can't do that. I, it, like the inside of my ears start to hurt. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to sleep with this in my head. This sucks. Um, so there's certain people like, it's just like, okay, who's partying tonight? Who's chilling? You got to play it by ear, you know? Yeah. We have, teenage Ball Rocket will definitely do like the, um, you know, switcheroo after the show. Like everybody checks in the hotel before the show. Whatever happens at the show happens. We come back and everybody's like, woohoo, and it's changed. And so people have to rearrange, like, okay, party room's over here. Um, that, we're going to play Sparkle till four in the morning. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's profesh. You know, you got your system down. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah, the new record, uh, it's six sesh. What a yeah. cool, that's like, that's perfect, I think, for you guys. Um, you know, it's just right there, right there, just slamming away song after song. I can imagine that that would be fatiguing on the voice after a few nights yeah totally it's just um you kind of have to like callous over in a weird way you know like it, it will have fatigue show three or four if it happens but um a lot of it comes with uh control too and it might seem like we're singing or screaming our heads off but uh we're going 75 percent you know like right more concentrating on hitting the notes rather than like screaming into the note. And it's actually easier to hit higher notes that way anyway, whenever it's more controlled for, for, for me and giving that has helped a ton with, uh, with vocal fatigue for me is just like doing some warm ups and um, also just singing properly um, and not screaming my head off. There's a time then maybe you, I go, I'll go 90%, right? You know, like this part of the set, I got to scream this part. But um, yeah, but yeah, rest is just clutch and just like plenty of water, of course. And um, partying and like back in the day, whenever Bottle Rocket would just really party hard, um, we were losing our voices all the time, especially me. 
yeah yeah <laughs> like oh cool ray like hasn't slept for like 48 hours and uh he's still drunk uh, <laughs> yeah I, I would always wonder to myself why why can't i like part why can't i tour and not get sick it's oh because you're just part you're like redlining your body just partying yeah, yeah we we we're dumb some of us yeah <laughs> yeah i um you know also i'll freaking uh smoke some bud and if i if if, if it they'll tear my throat if i'm not careful yeah yeah that, Weed you, will, will hurt my throat if i'm not careful and it'll hurt it'll affect my performance I it'll bet. affect my performance make Dude. you make you sing low <laughs> yeah 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 like cool i have nothing cody you're gonna have to sing tonight like that <laughs> that's it I, I i'm sorry miguel you got anything no yeah okay good luck cody <laughs> oh yeah i think i think uh anything like that it can help you for a little bit but i think it it changes your longevity like you can't sing for as long if you if you smoke any ganja or anything like that same with alcohol i think alcohol can help you for a minute but you won't be able to sing Maybe you could sing your full set, but but like things like being in the studio when you're singing for hours and hours, and you you know you're you're long past what you would normally sing at a show, right? Right. That's right. when I notice the fatigue a lot. Man, oh, I have walked into the blasting room with no voice, and it is like you know record labels paying money for you to record there, and you can't sing. It's uh. It, it could be the you were the worst place in the world, but um, yeah, you know, like, like whenever I go bowling, I'll have back whenever I used to drink, I could kind of get in this pocket where it's like the second or third pitcher, like I'm bowling <laughs> strikes, pitcher. nothing but strikes, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like later, um, I just bowled an eighty. <laughs> like, yeah. So, um, I Cody. Like he just gets into a pocket with alcohol, you know, where he's crushing beers on stage and just like it helps him. You can tell, but I've never drank before a teenage bottle rocket show or during ever. Like it's never happened. Um, except for like maybe a shot at the very end. Like cool, I'll take a shot, right. and uh, that's ended badly too. Like cool, I'll do a <laughs> shot of tequila, throw up on stage. Right. Like nope, that's not even staying down. That on stage. It's like you're, uh, you're, you're like uh, doing a sport, you know, because it's it's it takes a lot physically. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're firing off songs, you know, the same way MXPX is firing off songs. It's just like this section is these eight. We're not stopping. And um, and then the next section's 10, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, here, here's our little designated stop areas and try to come up with something to say that you didn't say last night because everybody in your band's getting sick of hearing your boring content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i always try to like switch it up i mean if if for anything for the for the band guys <laughs> no, dude, totally totally i'm like okay what i uh, and and then sometimes you'll get a great reaction at, from the audience and your band will be understanding like if he says that again tomorrow night it's cool yeah because yeah. Like, it was totally fired like <laughs> yeah that's great i love it i love it so um, do you guys just like crap out songs? Like, let's talk about songwriting because I was listening to the new album and you have a song called the squirrel. Yeah. And I've had my own run-ins with, with those little buggers, but <laughs> tell me about like, what the hell, what are you writing a song about a squirrel? I mean, I get it, but I love, yeah. it. I love that. It's like, you're my friend, little guy. You're my dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, Miguel wrote that song and he okay. is now like the lead director of the meditation center in Dallas. It makes um, way more sense now. Yeah, okay. totally. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Miguel is just sitting there staring out his back window and he's like, I love that guy. And, and uh, that's, that's really, I think the inspiration be, behind the squirrel. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's yeah, and he, Miguel wrote a lot of songs on the new album. He wrote Ghost Story, which is another song Cody sings, and he, sing, and he wrote a song called Moving On, which is the last song on the record, and mm -hmm. he moved from Wyoming to Dallas to be closer to his dad, and um, this is like a song about leaving town, but also leaving things behind that uh, that need to stay in your past, and 
it's just relatable and everything like that. So, um, so you guys, uh, you guys do guns. crap out songs. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's cool. It takes some some pressure off the rest, like me and Cody, as far as like filling up an album. Yeah, dude. But, I uh, mean, it, like I said, it's strong. Like just putting on this, it's like it sounds as good, if not better, than anything you guys do. So I mean, it just sounds great. So yeah, we we you know every record is is. It, every every teenage ball rocket record's rad. <laughs> yeah, of course, right? <laughs> They're all awesome. The one before this, it's called Stay Rad, and it's fucking great. There's like just awesome songs. Um, and I love the production, but it's super produced. Like it is it, it kind of lost a little bit of the feedback in the guitar and the guitar tone that my mom hates. Yeah. You know, and we were we were um interested in this new record, the orange one to uh, get back to like string noise and feedback and let's bring in every amp ever and like every guitar pedal known to man and let's like make these speakers scream and um we uh we did it <laughs> we I, think, did. I think you know i think most people in punk bands if you're if you're in a punk band a long long enough which you have been you you kind of go back and forth from like okay let's really try to make this production really tight and then you're like you kind of realize that's not the answer to like my happiness and then you go no let's go back down to where we were but do it well do it better than we did it you know and so like i know exactly what you mean by that and it's by all means you need to do that but don't yeah, be don't be don't be surprised when it goes like to the next place next time but yeah. i i think I was talking about this with somebody, but I think just there's something that's actually harder to make a record that's not perfect. It's harder to make a record that sounds good, but has some flaws, but the right flaws, right? Well, yeah, I mean, Cody listens to like those, some of that black metal stuff's like recorded, they recorded vocals through headphones that were somehow picking up a, a microphone frequency and intentionally bad. and. <laughs> yeah. um, not that we're going for that sort of like terrible, like let's make it terrible on purpose, but we were like, man, the, the guitar tone on the pink record, Freak Out, it, it's stoked. And what I, I want that every downstroke is gin, gin, gin. like everything's got to have that energy behind the eighth notes on the hi hat. And it's all got to have that the bass, the guitar, and it's got to be um, just vibrant. And it was on Freak Out. And the blasting room's rad because they keep all the Teenage Bottle Rockets hard drives. Mm -hmm. And we were able to pull that hard drive up and we thought it was this Bogner amp, but it was this other band amp. And I don't forget what it's called, the 62 or some shit. Anyway, we got, we found it. We found the amp and we got it in the studio and mic'd it up. And it's like, that's great. And then, you know, we just made it better after that. But yeah, it was definitely like let's let's look into the archives. How, what do we use on that record? Because Headbanger, our song Headbanger, comes in just boom, you know, like it, it's a long pick slide to fuck you, and like how do we get back to fuck you? And yeah. And, uh, and yeah, that that was a lot of the production on the newest one, and love it. I love it. Me and Cody playing a band called Sack. Sack just recorded their our newest record at the Blasting Room. And it is the same shit, just so much feedback. And um, we have this song where it's just like, if the, if no, if nothing, if the guitar is not being played at all, it's just, just <laughs> screaming feedback. There's no pausing this guitar. Like, it's nice. just like, and like, yeah, yes. So you just, yeah. So it's, you're just focusing on different things rather than like some people focus on, let's make sure every, part has no weird noises and like you're not focused on that you're just focused on let's make it sound like it sounds when we played in the room yeah there's, that. there's a big element yeah. of that there's a big element of we have demo versions of these songs like cody records on garage band and dude he'll send us demos that sound releasable yeah releasable yeah. And I'll do whatever I can with like my kid Milo on drums and I'll mic up what I have. I have a studio downstairs. It's a, it's like I have a little Pro Tools setup. I run Pro Tools 7. Um, I, I've never nice. upgraded. My, my computer's never been online. Um, Pro Tools doesn't know this computer exists. <laughs> Good. But never change. <laughs> yeah. 
it, it's just how do we make it better than what the demo is and how do we make changes that are worth making and also uh, if we make a change on the fly we refer to it as studio magic and it's happened and it, it when it happens it, it's it's just there's nothing like it here's a song it just transformed and so much better now so i know that we've brought in some songs to the studio where it's like this is definitely the single like skater die was definitely the single we knew it yeah absolutely. some songs have been bumped up to like the two and track two or track three that you like would be surprised just like the recording process and going down a hole or like not being scared to change something and that could lead to a song being better um so but for the most part we come in with like hey here's the song and here's the template this is how it's going this is how it is but some things are left open-ended especially backup vocals and uh you know sometimes sometimes it goes down yeah you can almost do no wrong i mean you just bring in a bunch of songs you guys have you know what sounds good just do it yeah the squirrel for instance like you mentioned um the the guitar lead in the middle it's just like <laughs> it's sick and the demo it was half the length and i was like it's gotta be twice as yeah because you're just it's getting into it right? it's the most shredding solo ever and now it's like you know instead of eight seconds it's 16 seconds or something it's not um <laughs> this crazy Metallica lead, but it's yeah. uh, adjustments like that. It, it's a, a big part of the Teenage Bottle Rocket song process, but songwriting process. But yeah, for the most part, Cody will write a song or I'll write a song and that's the songs we sing unless Miguel writes a song for us to sing and, you know, throws it our way. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I mean, I think it's invaluable to be able to write a song and then edit it later if, you know, because sometimes you, you don't realize a hook is as good as it is or maybe not as good you know it's not as good as you thought Vo both happens for me but but having the, like a little bit of time and like come back and listen to it it's hard when i'm playing it when when i'm singing it and playing it to 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 have a, a decision making process so i have to like record it you know i just do a one track or whatever but i just record the idea and then listen back to it and and then make decisions on that. Sometimes I'll write, you know, new words based on that too. But well, it's, it's awesome. I mean, just I I was getting ready and I was like, Alexa, play MXPX. And uh, while I was in the shower, and like, there's so many different sounds from each song, especially the, like the the like the singles or whatever, you know. And um, it, it's cool that like now it seems like your band has turned into like you know, here's a single. You know, this isn't. A, a record this is the here's a new mxpx song that we've been working on is that is that accurate <laughs> yeah i mean we yeah we do we do both you know we 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 do albums t still as well but right in between i think you know b there wasn't really guess we we did seven inches back in the day too in between albums we did eps so we're still doing that yeah we're still doing singles in between the album just to like give people it's stuff. awesome yeah you know, like focus on one song and just make sure it's dynamite. You know, I, I really enjoyed those singles. A lot of, actually every one of Cody's songs and a lot of my songs started as a song title. So mm -hmm. like Bigger Than Kiss was definitely written down before it was a song. And it's like, okay, here's how Bigger Than Kiss is gonna go. And I like the first time I did Acid was the last time I did Acid was the song title before <laughs> it was a song. And, um, it was, uh, yeah, my friend John Snodgrass said it in the car once. I'm like, that's a hilarious song title. And uh, it, it came into fruition. So, yeah, the songwriting process for Cody is definitely a laundry list of song titles. And he just kind of goes through like, all right, it's time for me to write Death Cart. Right, right. You have that, and, you have the ideas for a while. And then you're like, okay, I think I have an idea for this one. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that that actually makes a lot of sense because I kind of have maybe not as long of a list, but I have a few few ideas written down, and they usually are either a song title or what the song's gonna be about. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that we... that could be a good song, but right now I'm too busy, so I'm gonna we'll 
we'll get to that later. <laughs> Cody's working on a song called Airport Behavior, and I, <laughs> nice. it's, it's going to be awesome. I mean, every time we're checking into a flight, it's like this song has got to happen. It's just look at look at how these people operate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at how look at what this person's trying to do right now. <laughs> oh man. I love it. That's great. That is that is such a cool, a cool thing to hear. That that that's like how you write a bunch of the songs. Yeah, because it, it's just um, you know you don't get the joke was the song title, <laughs> and it's just driving around. And um, you know it, I have it on my notes on my phone. I can go through some song titles right now. One of them's I'm not doing good. <laughs> 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 I'm not doing good is the song title. Um Chasing Down a High. <laughs> so yeah. You know grabbing Cody's song titles and thumbing through them are are hilarious. Um yeah. And it's just uh he's always had real funny lyrics. He's he, back in the Lillingtons, now sax, no exception. Cody's always uh, had a twisted sense of humor, but a good sense of humor with the songwriting. And it's, it started with the song title. I love it. Yuri, our drummer, um, he, back in the day, we were, at a, we were doing a, a photo shoot in Nashville. This was ni- 90s, easily. And he saw this dog poke its head into this hole, like in a fence. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, guys, I'm going to start a band called nothing and then a dog's head based on this dog there he was looking at the hole and then right. the dog's head just was there I've heard of that band <laughs> nothing and then a dog's head and, the, and it was just like a joke band that we made up he made up mostly but we contributed ideas to song titles and there was so did you, did you really titles. wake up screaming was that like was that on in a van or on a bus or that was our first tour very first and yes it's a true story our very first tour we stayed at the singer of the band focused they were on tooth and nail records and the guy's name was tim Mann. and uh shout out what's up tim man uh he let us stay at his apartment uh, in long beach and so we were sleeping on the floor and we had had a full day of like we we filmed the video for punk rock show that day so it was it was a long day and so we were we were sleeping on the floor, but Yuri had like, you know, you chose, you choose where you get to sleep, kinda, I guess, you know, anywhere on the floor. So we had our sleeping bags and he put his sleeping bag in the closet. So it was like partly, so his head was inside the closet and his feet were like out of the closet. So it's middle of the night, like four in the morning or something. And we just hear, ah, 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 and he's just screaming. And then he just realizes, he's like, oh, shit. (laughs) You just didn't know where he was? Is that? We we thought he was dying. And we're like (laughs) running over there. Are you okay? And then we just start laughing. He he just said Muppets. So I had to write a song about it. So it is a true story. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, And it, it goes into like this, the song ends, and then you got this like, jazz riff yeah like, like you think the song's over and it's just like like goes into every note on the fucking guitar neck <laughs> like, I'm like, oh it's sweet <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a weird song I, I, yeah I, I think it's my favorite mxpx song it's the, like it, it's it's the most in common with teenage bottle rocket like it just repeats the same words over and over and they're like like you know like the basic chord format catchy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just like, and the vocals go da, 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 and then it's just like oh dude this is awesome i love this song it's a good one we play it now and again we played it we played it on our um live stream sessions our sick live stream sessions sick dude <laughs> it was good dude our live stream was sick yeah last year last year for the birthday shows we um you know how to do live stream yeah dude and uh we got the MXPX art dude to do it, you know, because we had just, um, you know, we played with in San Antonio with you guys. So it must have been a year after that. And I just love the artwork for those shows. It was uh, 
the Pee Wee Herman one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Pee Wee Herman had the, behind the, the other one was The Shining, maybe. Yeah, for Denver, The Shining. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we I, it was just like I remember, um, you know, specifically asking for that guy, uh, and in the uh, yeah, do so, a live stream. That's cool that you guys did a live stream. Did you do it live or did you? Have, we did, did you not. No, 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 no. Pre-recorded. Yeah, I just recorded it. And... One thing that was rad was the light girl. Like right before we did it, this lady that was running lights at the theater we recorded at the Oriental Theater in Denver. She's like, "Do you want anything with the lights specifically?" And I was like, "Yeah." Every time we switch songs, I'm gonna have my dude sort of tap you on the shoulder. But here's the color of the record that song's on. So our live stream, when we played a song off the pink record, the lights go to pink. And when we play a song off the green record, the lights go to green. And it oh, was like, this, yeah, it was like one of those last second decisions we made to like go through these eight different colors as we're playing. And, uh, and some of it was late. And uh, so the live effect was there. So it wasn't perfect. Um, and it was like, so some things, you know, came into play like last second and we were all quarantine, you know, so it wasn't, there wasn't much rehearsal involved. It was just sort of like, let's play the hits and make those moves. But yeah, it, it, we recorded it. And then maybe a couple of weeks afterwards is when it was actually released. That's cool, man. I'm, I'm glad you guys did it. I, you know, we did a teenage bottle rocket song on yeah. one of our live streams. Did you hear about right. that? <laughs> I think I told you about it, but no, yeah, no, Chris sent me some footage. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. That because, just came you, off a whim. Because you guys have a without you, and we have a without you, and we have to do your without you now. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't know why we've been neglecting this idea, but it's just like, hey, man, let's steal each other's without yous. I think it's up your alley. I think you, yeah. it would be. No, I know it. For sure, for sure. But yeah, it, it, it came, you know, it came about, you know, just one day we were just messing around, and I was like, hey, check out this without you song and we just started playing it and we're like you know what we should just cover it we should actually do this so we just kept Wait. playing it yeah that's awesome yeah that's great yeah um it's one of those songs where it gets requested a lot but we don't play it very often i, I recorded it on an acoustic album that i did yeah and it's that's just cool uh song. yeah man it, it's off the green record a lot of requests for without you. Thanks for making. <laughs> thanks, thanks for bringing it back to life, MXPX. Sorry. No, no, it's perfect. <laughs> well, we didn't even. I don't think we have. We haven't released it yet. I mean, I'm mean, sure we have a recording of the. We have a live recording of it, but oh, it hasn't been like actually released to streaming yet. So that's tons when of you'll live start recordings getting... from MXPX on the on the old Alexa. That's What's right. That? Like whenever I'm like Alexa, play MXPX. She's gonna hear me right now, and it's yeah. gonna happen. It's gonna, um, everybody's but... gonna start playing. Anybody that has it in the background. <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm not mad. I'm just waiting for the Alexas to turn on right now. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna ask your your day to day earlier, but you know, you kind of mentioned it. Just the fact that when you're not on tour, you're taking care of the little one and and obviously you're getting, like a, you're getting because, a lot like, done actually. I, I, i'm holding on to this dude he is passed out and uh he's hot <laughs> i'm like boiling hot he right now looks he looks warm and you're starting to look warmer and warmer <laughs> well i i just appreciate that you even could do this while uh watching your kids so thank you thank you for taking dude, the time it got pretty hot like half an hour i mean it got pretty he was loud half an hour ago i was like what the <laughs> hell we got to pull the plug on this sucker <laughs> like this is the my career hour man like not half hour <laughs> well no it's not the hour anymore it's now podcast so there's no real oh, okay time. even though my right. email says it or whatever but yeah Okay. It's a, it's cool. That's a it's good guy. Cool. That was a good segue to plug in the new name, man. I, yeah. 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 It's been my career for like three years, right? Yeah. Sorry. Just at one point, I was like, I'm just go back to podcast instead of hour. Got it. Yeah. I started as podcast. And then when I went to Adobe, I changed it to hour because it was an hour. And then when I left Adobe, I changed it back to podcast. Boom. 
Bam. I know. I should the subscribers stay the same. I wonder if my vibe. Pod, I wonder if my podcast would do better. Sorry to interrupt, but if I changed it to like, you know, the Bottle Rocket podcast or it's like something that's not like my name. Right. I mean, what would uh, what would most it be? Successful podcasts are their names, though, right? Like Howard Stern, Joe Rogan. <laughs> true. True. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But you're experiencing um, Joe Rogan. It's not just, it's not even called a podcast. It's that's what you need to do. The, the Mike Herrera, Herrera experience. Sesh. Sesh. The sick sesh. Just <laughs> yeah. start just ripping the off all your names. Sick Mike Herrera sesh. Without you worked out. So I'll just, yeah, we'll, we'll do right. six sesh. <laughs> six sesh podcast. <laughs> that's great. Well, dude, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see you guys at the end of this month. Uh, this podcast will come out before you guys are there, so it'll come out in time. Awesome. We'll have a success. Yeah, dude. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for having me, Mike. Right, Brad, dude. It. Later, buddy. Peace out. Later.